we are going to talk to you about Charlotte Perkins Kleeman. I'm going to start by telling you a little about her life. She was born in Connecticut. Her father abandoned her mother and siblings shortly after her birth, leaving them to struggle in poverty and emotional abandonment. Charlotte was an avid reader of history and literature and was inclined towards art. She studied at Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, Rhode Island, and began working as a designer of advertising cards for business and as a children's tutor. In 1884, Charlotte marries an artist, Charles Stetson. The marriage was a failure from the beginning. She rejected the traditional accepted rules for married women during the 19th century. She refused to submit to a life devoted to the duties of housekeeping and obedience to one's husband. She decided to focus on painting, writing poems, essays, and short stories. Oppressed by her unhappy marriage and experiencing what today is known as postpartum depression, Charlotte was taken to the neurologist with Dr. Silas Ware Mitchell, who was known for his rescue. This treatment consisted of social isolation. The treatment prescribed rest, tranquilizers, and forbade engagement in any form of intellectual stimulation, such as art, reading, and writing. Charlotte rejected the treatment by leaving her husband and moving to California with her daughter. Later on, she began speaking out publicly on social issues, including the treatment of women. In 1900, she remarried to George Kleeman, who was supportive of her social and political views. This marriage was happier, was happier than her first. Once married, she continued her crusade for women's rights by writing for several feminist publications and lecturing on repression of women. She also lectured on the topics of poverty, healthcare, civil justice, and labor rights. Okay, so the historical context of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Even though she started with the writing um, in the late 1800s, she was positioned into the modern period due to her unorthodox ideas. But in this case of history, um, she was involved in this modern period into struggles of power in this case. They were two world wars, um, a, a cold war, a lot of protests and movements within also destructive uh, issues in science, in this case, like the atomic bombs, and also a lot of participation and involvement within the government. In this case, an example would be Margaret Thatcher, an ex-prime minister from uh, Britain, in this case. Um, her type of writing in her books, she was always like catalogued to talk about women being underestimated, a lot of mental, mental health, and, and utopian thinking. She was such an inspiration at, at that time because she led a groundwork for future feminists. One example could be Kimberly Crenshaw. Uh, she was also an important activist that was always super defensive of the women's civil rights. And as I formerly said, her books was always led to an unorthodox and dominant ideas because she was always like shaping the movement of women's suffrage and rights, a lot of mental health, because she, like her type of thinking, it wasn't common at that time with the patriarchy mentality from, those, from that area that, oh, women always need to be delegated. Et cetera, et cetera. And she also attended to several physical protests and literary movements um, because she was super involved at the time with that type of thinking, the type of thinking she expressed in her unorthodox books. She had many major works. However, we will be analyzing women in economics in her land. In this case, Woman and Economic was published in 1898. The writing gave an impact on others since she included a breakdown of the relationship between the position of women in the larger community. The book also touched on a few dominant themes, the transformation of marriage, the family, and the home. 
She also shows how in order to survive in this society, women must change their cultural identities. And she demonstrated how women have been forced to become dependent on men. Um, in this case, a famous quote um, that we choose was this one. There is no female mind. The brain is not an organ of sex as well speak of a female liver. In this case, um, she shows how to reject the label of feminism and instead adopt the term humanist, believing it important to promote justice for all. And in her land, um, she wrote it in the United States and it was published in the 1915. And Gilman makes an important lesson in this major work as she shows the society is unjust to women and does not allow them to achieve their full human potential. She also creates in the story a means of equality for the man and at times sends a theme of women being superior to men. In, in contrast to the world where the men came from, they feel weak compared to the women of her land. Gilman explores women reproductive control and its benefits through Hairland. And we chose um, this quote, why this is a civilized country in protest, there must be men. In this quote, she shows how mean, how men assume that women are not able to grow on their own and they go as far as to suggest that women will be too jealous to succeed. So thank you for watching our video.